Easter, everybody. We toyed with not putting the show out because of Nanny Di's incident yesterday, but um, it's Easter. And it's a big opportunity for us to get really chocolatey. So though it's the morning, you won't be getting this till now. And now it's night time. What time is it now then, when they're getting it? I don't know. <laughs> what are you talking about? Why are we time oh, traveling? Yeah. Anyway, awesome. let's go to the dogs. Yeah. Right, this section of the show, we would usually have, of course, the morning after dish, but I know you guys are gonna let us off with this because of all the drama yesterday with poor old Nanny Di. We didn't get a chance to shoot the dish. So um, what I'm gonna do is next Sunday, I'm gonna put an extra dish. So you'll get three recipes next week. I might do a nice breakfast something, how about that? Um, but sorry about that, but um, and Mark was really worrying about it. I said, they'll be fine, they're family. It's funny shit, and I hope there's at least one chihuahua in there, yeah. in this lot, unable yeah. to bark. Yeah. Is there? I think so, yeah. <laughs> I was going to show a few things on Instagram. Let's do it. So, here we go. The sun out, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my show. god, god. <laughs> I love that actor. He doesn't get as much of a sort of what he does. I'm talking shit. Ignore me. <laughs> Scratch that thought. Um, Just one second. From Sriracha. Is it Sriracha or Haracha? Sriracha. I want sometimes don't you want to do that sort of what's it called? What that what's that TV show called? Tattoo their arms whilst bouncing over things. What? You know the, the extreme guys oh, in America. Jackass. jackass. I just oh, want to. Oh, right, yeah. So it comes out of my eyeball. <laughs> 21 degrees today and snowing next week. What have you done to the world? Look what we've done. What have we done to the world? Look what we've done. Listen, and he's done that thing where he's pulled his blazer too I far know, back. So it's hooked on the sort of shoulder muscle. Bless him. I've done um, that before. Weather gets slightly warm. Everyone in the room. I mean, I just love barbecues. I know. I mean, this, mm -hmm. this is one of the finest inventions since ever. <laughs> <laughs> since ever. Uh, uh, I hate barbecues. I like, I always I like, like the, the conviviality and them. the smell, and then I don't like the, like the, food. the actual food. It all tastes of charcoal. Just all tastes I mean, I know good, but I know you're going to say good barbecue doesn't. Say it. But even good barbecue. Even good barbecue tastes like barbecue. I think we're alone in that one, Dad. Oh, Everyone in the UK today. Hey. Come on. It is well off. Bobby Sue on. Might be. <laughs> Come on. It is well off. Bobby Sue on. Might be. <laughs> <laughs> it's the underplayed excitement yeah, first, I know. which is an excitement. 
I wish an alien landed right now. Oh. No, don't, I really do. I wish I an alien kind of came towards us over there. Especially at the moment. I'd take us somewhere more exciting. Yeah, I'd yeah. give my, I'd hand my body and life over to alien science in a heartbeat. Heartbeat. <laughs> they might take my heartbeat. Um, girls, when their relationship is going to. Yeah. Long. I want peace. I want problems. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my book is about this I want week. Problems. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, oh my god. No one iPhone uses in the morning. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh god, that's such a horrible oh, that noise sound. That is so horrible. Oh my god, I, I worry that if you do go to hell, that's mm. the sound of the gates opening. Oh right, yeah. On yeah. repeat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know Lil <laughs> Uzi, the rapper, I mean, he keeps telling you about he had like a diamond. Oh yes, yeah, like vision. Skull. Yeah, he's an American rapper. Yeah. But they did this, it's like, if Lil Uzi ever came to Croydon. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. That's very funny. Oh, no, no, it's I know, so it's sad. really sad, but it did make me That laugh. is funny. That would happen by the Whitgift Centre. <laughs> Possibly the most British accident ever. That was fucking scary. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, I'm uninjured. I'm uninjured. Uh, let me. Oh, sorry. Okay, no, no anger. No anger. Let's just. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's just take this. No anger. Oh, wait. Do you think that's number? I'm sorry. Do you think that. This is recording. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'm going to turn this off. It's just so British. Like this. How was he? Was he filming and driving? No, it's in his head. Well, that was fucking scary. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, dear. Dear. And the, the other man was not too scared. I'm on I think they're all in shock. Right. But it's just Theresa May doing? Oh, Theresa May's bottles of Fresame. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's just so random. Oh, God, it is. so accurate. Do you think she... I've just realised that's what she's been doing all these years. <laughs> that's really funny. Yeah. <clears throat> I've said it before, but we'll say it again. If women ever want a sort of... If you want a safe place to go to be insulted about your hair, go to the shampoo yeah. aisle and see the descriptions. It's very true. I take it personally when I read that stuff. <laughs> Okay. Two things I love, soy sauce and Labradors. That's not soy sauce. Oh, is it not? I'm okay. right. <laughs> oh. oh. Bless him. Oh my God, if only we had that footage of Toffee running across the green mildew on that pond thinking it was grass. Oh, yeah, that and she was actually so went and for a bit she, and like yeah, a cartoon character just, fell um, in. You right, sweetie? You just keep going in the background. Okay. Nigerian film. It's just so So bad. dramatic. It's so oh, right. funny. Yeah. Why did you have to kill her? After all she did for you. Hmm. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. Why did you have to kill Florence? After all she did for us. The guy in the background looking dramatic. Oh my god! Who's got the gun? The gun! That's it's better so than EastEnders. Yeah, yeah. That is better than EastEnders. <laughs> Our drama's shit. You're right there, Nads. I'm going in one second. You're really loud. I just can't find my earphones. And when you find them, she'll turn them oh. on and suddenly you'll hear Nadia on the toilet. It's really weird. Tough guys in movies hold... How, how tough guys in movies hold beer bottles. Oh, yeah, that's true. Thanks, Barry. Look, Carol just doesn't get that everything I do is for us, you know? 
And as a tough deadbeat boyfriend, well, I gotta go in those mines and solve this mystery. Before it's too late. Wow, well, something ain't adding up. <laughs> Whoa, I think you've had a bit too much to drink there, pal, chief. But tourists. Uh, <laughs> very good. Well, very good. Making your days seem brighter, though. So I'm gonna ask her to marry me. Uh-huh. Right after I make her apologize for kicking me out the house. <laughs> uh, pass me another, will you, Barry? Uh-huh. Keeping you in business tonight. He's very good. The way he carries on. Yeah. Um, these guys crack me up so much. They're so oh. weird. I think you could probably be friends with. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, like. Really utterly insane. No, but like oh. utterly insane. Okay. But if I find it really funny. Yeah. Oh. Do y'all see it? Tell me how you see it. This is. We went to the breakfast company. And they did their thing. Yeah, and then I we ate a lot, and then they sent us they just a lot. Yeah. Blueberry muffin, chocolate chalk chip, ch- 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 cookies, <laughs> three, three, three. <laughs> Like you it's where he, crazy. yeah, where he, he take, because what happens is when you go crazy like that, your whole body becomes a sort of a, a physical instrument. Yeah, I do it all the time when, and, and like when he just screams, it's yeah. like, oh, <laughs> right. you just, it's, yeah. it's like, it's not just it, it's beyond it. You just let it take over. Um, <sighs> my hair is trying to come off my head today, it's really odd. It's like walking off like a crab. It's because I saw that, an octopus teacher this week, and he's right. like, <laughs> my hair feels like an octopus. Um, this is really cool. What is so perfect? Oh my oh, god! Yeah. <laughs> Get this out of here! Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it! Yeah. <laughs> it's so cool! Oh yeah! <laughs> I'm such a little kid! Huh? Did you just talk to me? Hello? Hey, Jarvis. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> this is the closest thing ever. It's oh so cool. Oh my god, cool. I want one. I know you don't, I know you don't want one. And I just stay in it in a corner. Really <laughs> strangely. Imagine when I'm 90 and I've got like an Iron Man hat. Yeah, mantle. imagine. I'm Probably. in the back garden of wherever I end up trying to sort of hover fly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, if you see my mallet finger, lots of you wonder about that. This got trapped in a window years ago and it's getting worse as I get older. But look, there's no power behind that knuckle. Nice. I said, could you do an operation? They said, we could, but then you might lose the whole use of that finger if it goes wrong. I said, all right, I'll just have it like that. <laughs> it's like getting that, worse. <laughs> um, everyone in the UK knows this banger. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> British people always seem to confuse American people on TikTok, and American people are always like, What is this that? This song sounds shit. And oh, it's that's like, really it's funny. It's not a song, song it's a fucking wood pigeon. <laughs> oh, he's back. Girl, I'm not a Whatever's going on, guys, yeah. I'm gonna run right up it. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. So this guy like duetted a video with this other girl. So this girl has this, on TikTok. This girl has made the video. Yeah. And then he has just made split screen a video it. alongside it. Yeah. Gotcha. A bit like the dogs that was whining. Yeah, yeah. Last but week. it's it's really funny. Like. POV. I'm listening to you. Oh, thank you for listening. So. Um, uh huh. Well, I was getting pizza, and the. And no way. Yeah, it was so good, and... Uh, she said, what? Well, she didn't say anything yet. Uh, it, I was Get just, out of town. <laughs> well, I wanted to... Come on, uh, right? <laughs> so pepperoni is on Tell the pizza. Pe- pepperoni was on the pizza. Whoa! <laughs> I know. 
Oh. But there was also sauce. Okay, and then. Cheese, and there was cheese on the pizza. Go on. And so then I, so I was taking a bite and burn it. Yeah. Yeah, it did. So burn my tongue. Sounds and good to me. It wasn't that. Uh. Hurt, honestly. Um, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I so good. I good. Look, <laughs> look, just the way he talks. He's so really sweet, sweet at being polite. I oh, know, he's so sweet. Um, no hint that you wanted to punch her. I know. <laughs> and this one. Hi, Pepper! Oh, oh here she Cannot, he's got nothing there. in there. No, no. <laughs> he's got nothing in there. Um, everything about him is screaming out. Yeah. Ow. <laughs> uh, when you've been holding, when you've been hiding underwater from a bee, five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so silly. Running out of breath for the It's that same one, Pepper. Oh. He's so cute. Little mouth. Sniffles asleep. Oh, he's passed out. <laughs> oh my god, how? <laughs> so I never used to like Chihuahuas, now I do. Um. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> no, now I do. Uh, now I do. Now I do. <laughs> that is a simple statement of fact. <laughs> I've always liked pugs, but now I like them more. Yes. And I never liked chihuahuas, but now I do. Um, POV, I mentioned another girl's name, my girlfriend. Fair enough. <laughs> Let's see you around. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. That's Bandersnatch, you never finished oh that. Oh God, Black Mirror. yes, Black Mirror. But it's <laughs> Fair enough. <Huh>? Fair enough. <laughs> Let's see you around. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's very funny. That's very funny. Um, very dark. See you, then, darling. Have you yeah. found your ear earphones? No. Don't lose yourself in love or dance or life or Croydon. Uh, that's these two guys again. So. What, what do you think when you pull up? <laughs> Uh, oh, he's great. I think my pleasure! Oh, I got a headache. Huh? Really? You know, okay. you know, 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 I said, I want you to say Tate and Caden when we get around to grab our food. Guess what? We pull up. They didn't say both of our names. They said for Caden. I said, what about for Tate? He's with it. He's with me. He's here. Say his name. Don't forget it. The toys. You guys would be God, such I good love friends. Him. I know. He's got your energy. God, so is. <laughs> Mania. Which um, I know drives some of you guys mad, I do apologise. Um, okay, so you can't blink until the singer says 1738. Right. But this guy's... Oh, God, that's really hard. Because it was sped up, so yeah, yeah, when yeah, you were listening to it, it was in slow motion. Uh, I clear my ear from the ear plug that I put in to stop Nelly snoring in my ear. Oh, Sriracha. Oh, oh. Squeeze it in the ear. Works, <laughs> works every time. You already know who it is. It's your boy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I love that song. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, and that song goes la da dee la da da la da dee la da da. Can someone tell me who that song's by? Because I want to put it on my dad's playlist. Not my dad's. I'm the dad. Yeah, he's the dad. I'm the daddy. Oh, this one's funny. <laughs> When it's like that, it looks like a ring donut. Yeah. Wow, what is she dreaming about? Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> now fuck off, right? Gus, Jim, Bill, whatever your fucking name is. You're not going to be dead if you touch a chicken. I'm not going near my chicken. You understand? I don't even go there. <laughs> whatever your fucking name, name is, is. you will be dead. <laughs> Oh, look at this poor dog. So this dog has um, separation anxiety oh, with no. Poppy. Because she's only eight weeks old and this is her third family because they keep abandoning oh, no. her. Oh, no. And this is what happens when she when the owner goes like, leaves her for like two seconds. So oh. oh my God. Why she's had so many owners, though, isn't no, it? No, no, it's the separation. Oh, it's got separation anxiety. Oh, bless. And she's taken away from her mum too early. Oh, bless. It's so sad. Oh, don't. But yeah, like probably the last two did. Yeah, they're just like, Jesus, screaming. that noise. But the poor baby. Poor thing. Um, this is really sweet. <laughs> oh, yes. That's how Toppy looks at me sometimes. <laughs> Oh. That's so cute. <laughs> Ain't no mate like a four legged mate. <laughs> and I love this. Baby. What's up? No. No. Oh, you're so tired. Mm. You need to sleep. It's so cute. Oh, what a poor dog. Um, no, I've just got some fun dog ones. Oh, Viva! <laughs> Where is the ham? <laughs> She's always there. Oh, Viva! <laughs> Why is he always lurking? He's so lurking. Where is the ham? <laughs> Oh my god, that's so funny. Use Piano Man by Billy John on Amazon Music. Oh, is this the put-upon one? <laughs> 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 Oh my god! Oh, oh, oh. They're those two the really embarrassing friends, aren't they? Yeah. And you're out. I you're just right. love the way that Huskies run another one sets is set off, but they, they just, have no. to just all do it. <laughs> So funny. This is really funny. So this cat's asleep and then when he realises everyone's getting ready for dinner, it wakes up and then... It's the way that it tweaks. It goes. <laughs> oh, that's it, right? Okay. 
Oh my god, that's. He kind of hurries it up, right? Know, it's it's coming. It's so cute. Oh my god. I think you'll love this. She's. Oh, are you sleeping? Are you sleeping, Otter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. It's so cute. Oh, I are love you. Him. Are you sleeping, Otter? I really want an otter, not a dog. I want an otter on a lead that I walk around with. Um, they can take your finger off, you know that, like a fish. They can eat, cut through bone. Really? Oh yeah, really fine. Oh, Jesus Christ. 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 Jesus Many good performers. Bitch, I'm a big gangster. I turn around there for in love. I am a So, have you met my missus? Bitch, I'm a big gangster. I turn around there for in love. Bitch, I'm a big gangster. I turn around there for in love. How expressive. I know. I love them. They're like the most frightening neighbours come around for a barbecue. Yeah. Let me in. Another fabulous feast of fun yeah. from the fabulously Maddie Madamushka. Yet again, Maddie just plays with a straight bat but makes she's us all so laugh. Good at oh, it, she's so she? she curates the funniest oh clips God. and then some of the sweetest clips. And as I said to her in one of them a couple of weeks ago, it's so sweet I can see what sort of week she's had based on how many sweet animals there are in. And there were a few sweet animals this week. And sometimes she shows you things and she looks at you like, Do you get it, Dad? And you're like, Maybe you don't, and you're like, yes, we don't. They're so lovely. They're so heartwarming. Uh, anyway, so uh, headlines, the news. Good news, bad news. It's time for the news. <laughs> Time. Well, I have to, we're going to be honest, we had to look and look and look. Very boring newspapers today, but well, we found some little... I was talking about this on pieces. Coffee Moaning in the week, that actually, as we come out of COVID and the headlines simply aren't there to be mm. grabbed at or created, you realise how much the news gathering teams and companies have literally fed, fed off, off this it. crisis. And it makes you understand why they need to keep finding... Yeah, 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 yeah. So hopefully we'll all be a little bit more sort of cynical about these things now. Um, the first one I wanted to do is something I heard about on the radio, and I just think this is a very beautiful thing. I love, I love public art, I love murals, I love things that sort of commemorate things. And just opposite um, the Houses of Parliament, I think on the promenade on the, on the, uh, on the South Bank, which abuts St Thomas's, right beneath it, if you like, um, they've started painting uh, a red heart for every victim of COVID. Oh. Oh, uh, and I lovely. think people are popping their names in them as oh, well. Isn't that beautiful? And there's a, a, and what wow. what's, what shocked me about oh. it? Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? The National COVID Memorial Wall, it's called. Uh, Sabrina Montgregay has or Montgreg has witnessed more than most of the grief left behind by each death from COVID. The 28 year old works in the intensive care unit at Chelsea mm. and Westminster Hospital, and she's instigated this leaving of messages and hearts. But there will end up being 150,000 
because oh officially, God. officially, there are going to be by the summer 150,000 death certificates with COVID. That is the most beautiful idea. So I think we're going to go. I want to go down and look at it. Do you remember the poppies? Yeah, absolutely. On Tower. But, but Tower you know what immediately worries me. What? It's because people are writing on it. Will it become like, you know... Well, th there is that worry. I mean, I think people are using some of the hearts to pop in messages about their loved ones and, and all that sort of stuff. Oh, God, keep it safe, because that is yeah. very beautiful. I know that you're really enchanted by the idea of Kenneth Branagh playing <laughs> um, Boris. I am. Because you're fascinated by how much he looks like. I think he's gone a bit over the I top in this one, though. that one... Well, I've seen other photos where he looks incredibly convincing. That That doesn't look so convincing. It's does cool. it? No. I mean, that's making me think, well, we were watching Gogglebox last night. It's making me think of Bad night. Grandpa. And I, know that yeah, exactly, that's it. <laughs> and I have to say, I was agreeing with the Gogglebox people that were saying, I mean, who wants to watch what's happened over the last year? We've lived it. Yeah, well, I, I hope it's it, a bit too soon. I know what you mean. I mean, I think there's, I mean, Matt Hancock's looking extraordinarily tickled pink, isn't he, with the casting yes. choice for him. I think yes, he's rather he's thrilled. very flattered. But, uh... Yeah, I was in, and, 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 and I mean, I think it's going to be intriguing. I think if they approach it correctly and they pitch it correctly, we might all want to revisit it like a, like a bucket of sick. You never know. I don't. Yeah. Um, also, apparently, multiple there were multiple attempts with the Prime Minister on April Fools by aides and everybody to April Fool him with various documents and oh, were all sorts of things, and everybody was in on it. He didn't get fooled on one of them. Did he not? Which is quite. Well, I tell you why, because he's the biggest end. fool, isn't he? He's the biggest prankster. Nothing got by him. What if he got anything past anyone else? Mm. Well, people really, really liked that. One, one, of, one of the bogus items in the red box claimed that Michael Gove was planning to use his Duchy of Lancaster, Lancaster title to brand a new range of sausages to rival the Duchess' original range. <laughs> I think that's a bit much, though. I mean, I don't, you couldn't really believe that, could you? It's very eaten, isn't it, all this? It's all very eaten. Yeah. I'm going to use my Duchess of Ducus. Oh, yeah. well, I'm so pleased you've got a Duchess of something or other to yeah. play fucking April Fool's with. Yeah. Not that I mind that. I mean, obviously, but it's just all a bit boy's own, isn't it? Tony Parsons. I used to have a lot of time for Tony Parsons, and then I didn't have a lot of time for him. I don't know why. Uh, anyway, he has an opinion piece, doesn't he, in The Sun? And he has a really important headline. We can't end rape culture until we ban internet porn. Very simply put, and there is a huge kernel of truth in this, because whilst he is coming at it from the perspective of, you know, obviously there's been a lot of publicity. I've been talking a lot about the fact that private schools and schools in general need to take responsibility for their culture. Yeah, I think it's not just that, private schools. Well, it's not just schools. And I think it's really important to be reminded of this. There's an awful lot that goes on with teenagers. This is, you know, we can't, we can't sort of completely abdicate any responsibility within our families or society yeah. or within the exactly. systems it's that really we have. It's dangerous to yeah, say, yeah, oh, yeah. we've got a problem in our so, schools. You know, no, we've got a problem everywhere. Yeah. And you know what, what that's just made me think, you saying that, is that we've all been having these conversations mm. around porn and the availability of it. And, yeah. you know, we've talked often, haven't we, about how you ran around with your one little piece for me, page yeah, three yeah, yeah. of a breast, and it was the most exciting thing ever. Yeah. And now a boy can type in breast and he can get all manner of horrific extreme. But the thing is, whenever I think along those lines, I never imagine for a single second that there's anything we can do about that. But it's... Well, I mean, this, this, this is the problem, isn't it? This is where tech, the configuration of tech with freedom of speech, with freedom of access to content. I mean, just well, before we get to whether you can, I think just going back to this thing of what is actually being uh, shared amongst kids, off the back of that Tony Parsons headline, a landmark British study of the most popular and easily accessible websites, so that's free porn sites online, has revealed disturbing non-consensual videos. So there's a, a blurring of sexual violence, uh, rape sort of fantasies, upskirting and all this kind of stuff. And I mean, I, I, and, and you know what? Those boys are also very abused by those images. That's yeah, what I'm well, they're, they're, they're anaesthetised. Well, I was numb. talking to a friend of mine the other day and she was saying, I'm just really scared that my son is scared at what he's seeing because he doesn't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's violent. Because it, yeah. Do I have to go at it hammer and togs? Do I have to make this woman scream and cry yeah, and yeah. all this stuff? And I, th I said to her, well, you know what? You're just going to have to have that really awkward conversation. But that's you where it's a really difficult... And that's not what it is. Well, that's what... I mean, the book review that I do this week has a little bit of this about what we're willing to accept within relationships and things like that. And I think it's a really interesting debate because, you know, what 
boys feel the pressure to do? How much is that actually the individual responsibility of a boy or a societal, societal responsibility of pressure? It takes a you know, village to it, bring up a yeah, child. Yeah, I mean, so it is a really hard thing. It is, it is about culture. It is about education. It is about availability. And maybe I mean, there's it is got to be about something us about questioning, availability. actually, this belief that we have that the genie is so far out of the bottle. Yes. There's nothing, never anything we can do about the availability. Of exactly. And maybe that there, maybe there is. It's, you know, all these things are forever evolving. And I think you can't have a one, you can't have a completely efficient system for anything. No. I mean, if you think back to the 70s and 80s with censorship, you'd always get films, you know, no one for a minute is suggesting you can get a completely sort of a firewall against access to this stuff. If you want to try hard enough, you're going but, to be but, able to get it. But, but, you know, if you had to pay for it, but, but, that, but that just leads on quite nicely to this. Parents urge to help tackle rape culture by being stricter. Oh. I think this is a good thing for us to do as a Confessions of a Modern Parent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's this head of this very expensive um, private school saying we've got to this place now with too many of our... And I think we're, we're, I think we're guilty of this, where parents have got almost... We want to be their friends so much that we, we almost give them too much privacy as to not intervene in their lives. And I really think that that is a discussion. I certainly, yeah. I'm certainly guilty of that. We accept being told to go away and not interfere because we I, don't want to damage our friendship. Um, well, it's almost, I think sometimes I've been too respectful of their right. boundaries right. and right. their privacy. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think, because we grew up in the 70s and there weren't any. I mean, my mum my mom was just like, you just did whatever you, my mum told me yeah. and I just... And so I grew up thinking I want my children to have more freedom. And I think, I personally, think I've gone too far the other way. Interesting. Yeah, interesting debate. This, this story has absolutely rocked me. And it, it, and it is just it's the saddest, saddest of it's stories. This poor great-grandmother, Lucille Downey, just aged 85, was, who died after two completely out of control, vicious dogs that were her neighbour's dogs broke through a hole in the fence and killed her, murdered her, basically. It's like, for me, it's like the neighbour murdered mm, her, not mm, the poor dogs, because mm. the dogs brought up, brought up by decent people would have been loving dogs, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, but the, the terribly sad... Oh, she also had dementia. I mean, oh, it's bad. just horrific. And apparently the attack went on for five minutes. She was dead at the scene, but there were no screams. I think she must have gone into such shock. Now, what makes me so cross about this is that the RSPCA had been told numerous times about these dogs. And I don't know if you were watching our Coffee Moaning yesterday when I was having a rant there about the new style of uh, drug dealers on little electric scooters on the pavement. Now they're having weapon dogs run along beside the scooter. And I, I, I just think something really needs to be done about this. It's like when we see the dogs in the park being trained to be weapon dogs... And, and they don't want to be, you know. I don't actually understand why. I was thinking about this again yesterday. I don't know why they can't license it. I think they should license dogs again. I mean, I know your, your argument is, well, people get around it. But if people, if the police can stop you in a park and have the right to ask you if you've got a license and you haven't, and your dog's impounded, then you are going to wheedle some of this stuff out. Mm. You really are. Apparently, the, the neighbour did never walk to these dogs because he didn't want mud in the house. So they were, off, they were <laughs> desperate. They were desperate, weren't they, those dogs? Yeah, yeah. They might have even been hungry. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, I thought you'd like this. Tongs at the ready for a spicier barbecue season this summer. We have big debates about barbecues in this household. I hate them. Uh, Nadia loves them. I think the food always ends up tasting exactly the same, regardless of what's on it. But... So um, rude. Well, no, no, but it's no fault of anyone. It's always a bit it's burnt. It's not true. No, no, it's no, I know it's not true. Either. But look, but look, this year, apparently, people are riding to someone like mine's rescue to sort of sell me the barbecue because they're going to use extra seasoning of huge sales of Asian spice blends, Middle Eastern marinades and fusion condiments. They're soaring so that we can get a variety of flavours out of our barbecue. And I think that's a good thing because I find barbecue boring. What can I do? You want me to not say it. Your I find barbecue boring. Tomorrow are going to have all your gorgeous pork oregano. Kebabs. No, you don't have to. You're having a laugh? We well, don't have to. Pork kebabs. In a minute you're going to talk about marrying lamb or something. It's pork and lamb, but oh. I'm doing chicken, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I just thought, there you go, it's going to be a more a more varied and exciting day around the Actually, barbecue. Actually, what I thought I would do is do your fish on the barbecue, because that's really nice on the barbecue. Great. Yeah. Or you can just have beans on toast. <laughs> um, um, have you got a, I've, I've, I've got a bit of a celebrity one before you go to yours. Um, what, Regé Jean, Regé Jean. Regé Jean from Bridgerton isn't coming back for season two. 
and it started people up thinking maybe he's been cast for Bond. Um, I like Regé, Jean. I worry, I worry I think he, that he lacks the depth. I absolutely will tell you this right now. He, that was his part. Some actors just get oh, one part, part that is in Bridgerton. The right, yeah. Oh, right. I, I don't think he had the depth either. I, I think he was struggling. He's confirmed he's not appearing in season two, and obviously people are now asking, uh, you know, I, we reported on Popcorn Junkies that Tom Hardy looked like an absolute, it was in the bag, but clearly it's not. But they're talking about whether he could, I mean, I think it would be a great move for diversity and everything. Be one note. But I do worry that he might be a bit one note. Just Gorgeous, lovely, Gorgeous, charming, lovely, brilliant. everything yeah. in it. But I just yeah. worry he's one note. What's your last one? Well, I just thought we'd do lovely Stacey because she always cheers us up. Her beautiful house. We had such a lovely day on Friday on Loose Women and she was telling us all about her new house and her garden. And she's just got a, a great deal with In The Style uh, online retailer. Like, she, like Stacey gets offered so many... Um, deals and she's like meticulous about she does all the research on the brand and everything she works really hard I mean she was posting yesterday on her Instagram all the beautiful scrapbook books she's been making over the months of wow. what she wants to do she's she into does everything time, she? to a hundred percent maybe she's does. found her calling maybe all the other stuff has just this has been leading her to this sounds like a that song beautiful by home and you I'm going I mean? over soon to the garden and I Ooh. can't wait also do you, remember her, you, do you remember how we always used to say Scarlet Moffat was just so smart yeah, and she, gobble yeah, box? Yeah, just like the brother and sister team are now uh, yeah. in it. Well, she has 13 A-star GCSEs, three A-levels a and a 2-1 two, two uh, bachelor's degree. Doesn't surprise me. No, it doesn't. But it's funny, both these girls are on the same page, Stacey and Scarlet, and the amount of people that think both these women are stupid. Do they? Because, oh my God, yeah. Like, well, Stacey because of the way that she speaks, Scarlett because of the way she speaks. No. And they're both gorgeous. I mean, we're and past that, surely. No, we are not. I'm no? sorry to say, and I'm going to, you know, and they are both, any, you know, underestimate Stacey at your peril because oh. she's one of the smartest people I know. And we spotted how bright Scarlett was, didn't we, in the first week of Gogglebox. Well, I don't know if you remember. But I love it when people yeah. underestimate um women, well, anyone, because of their accents. Oh, so do I. I love it. I've been I banging, love it. I've been banging the drum for the fact that the whole performance industry needs to have more people yeah. with real backgrounds, yeah. for God's sake. Um, I like this. This is a bit of an odd one, but if you've seen something called The Social Dilemma, there's, there was a, they talk in that about how, you know, the algorithms of things like Amazon, you know, you yeah. order a book, it says, if you bought this, you'll like this. And if you watch a film on YouTube, if you like this, you'll like this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Instagram, IGTV, all the algorithms do that. They're, do, they're launching two new services. There's a bit of a kind of inherent contradiction here because they are apps. But there are two apps that aim to break the grip of digital algorithms. They want us to be able to stumble across stuff again. Without, oh, being, be nice. without being told to go there. Stumble uh, across. Yeah, and one of the apps is called Stack. And in a world where we are force-fed suitable matches, we've taken the plunge and decided for you. One of oh, them sends idea. four journals or books to you every year. You've got no idea what they're going to be about. They're just going to be random subjects, mm. but you have to read them. Oh. It might be a way of... I mean, I don't know how much it'll take off, but I do think it's like... It reminds me of that thing that we said a while back with uh, GPS and SatNav. We've lost the art of getting lost. We no longer get lost and we no longer stumble across stuff because we, well, yeah, you do, but we never, we no longer really stumble okay. across stuff because we go towards what we know we like. Yeah. And I think that's important. So what do we go to now? What do we like next? Um, is it? Uh, no idea. Lisa loves. Lisa loves. Lisa, 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 Lisa loves. Lisa loves. Lisa loves. What are you going to do when you no Lisa longer have to socially distance? Loves. Are you going to do it over the internet? Lisa loves. Lisa loves. Lisa loves. loads of fantastic filming and I hadn't pressed effing record. <laughs> you know what it was because a pressing bite you press, it's got the thing up there and you think this is it. 
Do you know what though? I'm just as stupid because I didn't even notice <laughs> because there's always a little red live. It's been one of those days today. It's one of those days. Yeah. Should we go okay. for it? So somebody, oh. Kim, one of our lovely subs, got in touch with you, didn't she? And asked you yes, for so, makeup brushes. Is, makeup brushes. Kim Kreber, one of your uh, subs, said, please, 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 can you do makeup brushes that don't cost an arm and a leg? So I was like, right, okay, I'm on it. So while I was away, I went to B&M, my most magical place ever. Now, these brushes called Real Techniques, you can get them in Boots, but in B&M, oh my Lord, they're even cheaper. So you can get a set that's called Cashmere Dreams for eyes, I fancy brush set, it's called. So you get a brow brush, an angled concealer brush, a pointed shadow brush, a detailer, a blended shadow brush, an angled eyeliner, and a makeup bag for 20 quid. 20 quid, but isn't it 20 quid. rubbish for 20 quid? No, they're not. Real oh. techniques are really good. I've got loads oh. of real techniques in my makeup um, brush set. You know, I've got massive, massive range of brushes. And I do come back to real techniques. They, they're they sustainable, another word I can't say, sustainable. <laughs> <laughs> they're sustainable. Yeah sustainable see there i can't say sustainable and you can't say worcestershire sauce worcestershire sauce <laughs> Worcester sauce and i can say that i don't think it's and worcestershire sauce it's worcestershire, worcestershire sauce <laughs> anyway the best thing about this makeup set is kim is that you can add to it you can add a concealer brush a powder brush and you can still keep the same set so you don't, some sets you just buy and that's it. And then you've got other colors, but this one you can add to it. So you can add a beauty, you know, powder brush and all sorts. So you, you can build it up. And the best thing about real techniques is, and what a lot of people won't know is when they wash their makeup brushes, you need to wash them and either lie them flat over an edge or upside down now real techniques i found this gadget oh god that looks good this is amazing so it peels off at the back and you can re re-stick it anywhere on your mirror oh. so what you do girls is all boys what you do is you get your makeup brushes and you put them in upside down so wow. when you try them you dry them oh, so they're down. Oh, so good. And how much are they? This is, where are we? Where's my little notes? Can you believe that this thing is, when I can find it, £1.49? No. £1.49 oh for that. Oh, my God, that's and How many is it holds? Because you One. do, you end up lying, laying them on a towel, put them on a bit of kitchen paper. And that's it brilliant. holds 11 brushes. Brilliant. And you can just get two if you've got more brushes, but you must wash your brushes. Really, really important. Now, the next thing on Real Techniques, apart from their amazing brushes, are these. So these are called beauty blenders. Yeah. Now, you can get them in a one solid one, but these are little travel ones. So if you're going out to a club and you like using beauty blenders, there we go. It's a little sponge that you can get wet and then you can do all under your concealer, your little mascara, and then you can pop it in there. And it comes in two, and those ones, I think they're about two quid. Brilliant. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. So I'm doing really well with my brushes. So Kim Kreber, I hope you're excited about <laughs> I'm sure she will be. Oh, You've answered that. In the greatest of detail, I you know, know, guys, Lisa was telling me that you can pay up to three hundred pounds for a blush or brush. Just goes Either to show, doesn't it? More. No, I'm I... really glad you've said all that because I think everybody thinks you have to spend a fortune on a makeup brush. No, you don't. Good, but... You really don't. You can get a makeup brush for. I'll I'll do my bar. Why we're talking about makeup brushes? I'll do my bargain bucket, not at the end now, because here is another 
eco tools they're called and these are makeup brushes from b m there's a range called eco tools and these are which is ridiculous guess how much hello 2.99 for that no. set and they are so so soft it's untrue wow. i mean 2.99 even if they don't last you know forever which they won't the best thing about it is they've got the little instructions on the back for you makeup artists that have no idea what to do so mm. it'll tell you what each brush does on your face and 2.99 bargain <laughs> lisa loves lisa no hard. easy lisa, lisa loves so that's lisa my makeup loves. brushes okay now, here's moving on to my next one and i can't say the word bay and lake upper upper therapy apothecary 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 is that apothecary what's just a sauce what's just a sauce apothecary you say it. Like, say apothecary i say um, what's just a sauce can you imagine saying that when i've had a few of <laughs> I was saying to Alexander, who introduced me to this, um, who's a wardrobe stylist on Lingo, and I said, I won't be able to say that word, so please, Bay and Lake. Uh, pa, 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 pa. Anyway, moving on. So what it is, in the makeup room, I walked in every morning, and you know I love my candles, you know I love my smells, and everything has to be fresh. Walked in every morning and I was like, oh my God, Alexandra, it just smells amazing in here. And she's like, oh yeah, it's this. Anyway, her brother and brother-in-law, uh, sister-in-law, kindly gave us this. So what it comes, oh. so you put your candle in the bottom and you've got your melt pot. Oh, nice. And that comes in, oh, I've lost you. That comes in grey and white and they do other ones. They go in on the website soon. But the packaging is all eco-friendly. It comes like this in a straw box. You can just throw away everything. So there's no plastic. It drives me insane when I yes, yeah. It's like, it's like, Guilty like conscience. this. And it's a family-run business, and it's just insane. So I've opened, opened one up, and they come like this. The square so you break off a little square pop it in your dish honestly if you had smell a vision this is insane so this one is cactus and ocean mist now ocean smell oh, well, is oh, my cactus smell. And ocean oh, my mist. but what i love about these things i'll bring some over tomorrow when i see you they put little quotes so it's discovery notes on each packaging so it says if ever there was a day of spa built in the oasis of the center of the Sahara, we believe it would smell like this. <laughs> dogs oh, just one second, just for the dogs. This one is called Ocean Cactus Ocean Mist. So what I like about them on there, it's got a little discovery note. So it says, if ever there was a day spa built in an ocean, Oasis of a centre of a Sahara. Sahara. We believe it would smell <laughs> like this. I can't even speak. Right, let me start that again. <laughs> if you're in the middle of an ocean, in the middle of the Sahara. Listen, it's. I love little quotes. Listen. It's a discovery note. It's quite funny at the end. If Go ever on, there was a day spa, will you listen and concentrate, madam? Yeah, yeah, I am because Mark's gesticulating beside me and pulling my focus. Stop. Go on, please. If ever there was a day spa built in an oasis of the centre of the Sahara, we believe it would smell like this. Supple and refreshing. We love the ambience it creates. A welcome embrace calm at the end of a long day or trek through the desert. Just make sure the camel stays at the door. It, you know, so they've got like little little funny quotes on and they're amazing. Why are you laughing? Mark is doing a full pot. He's now boiling the kettle. It's, 
Mark, I literally oh, can't hear Lisa. I can't hear Lisa though. <laughs> it's got all different. So this is velvet, tahini, and, and vanilla. <laughs> I can't even say that velvet word. And, I'm yeah, running. No. Oh, no, that tahini. One. Tahini. Tahini. <laughs> Lime, basil, and mandarin. I know that word. What's and tahini? Himalayan jasmine. Anyway, <laughs> there's so many melts. And they are... Hang on a minute. Are you telling me there is a melt with the fragrance of tahini? Um, hold on. No. Hold on. <laughs> Titanium. No, what is it? T-A-H-I-T-I-A-N. <laughs> Titanium. <laughs> Titanium doesn't smell of anything. What's that out word? I can't. I can't see. Spell it out. T a h i t i a n. T a h. T a h i t i a n. Tahitian. Tahitian vanilla. Tahitian. What did I say? Titanium. Oh, well, my, no, my favourite one was tahini. <laughs> Velvety tahiti. Oh, my God. There's so many words I can't say. No, I am like that. I've, I've got loads of words I can't I'm say. Manipopisms, they're called. It comes in a beautiful box with all straw and everything's, you know, you can throw everything away and get all those gorgeous burning candles out. So you can get six candles for £20. and the burner melts the burner and the melts is 29.99 72 hours worth of burning because some of them they don't last long at all you know right. they just melt in seconds and then they're like oh gone in two days but there's 72 hours so there's so many colors uh fragrances lime basil and mandarin black pepper and rosemary that'll be nice for when you're cooking <laughs> anyway, delivery is £4.35. I don't know why I'm finding this so hilarious. <laughs> You're a nightmare. I you have sense. to see it to believe it, don't you? You do. And when you see it tomorrow, what when I bring them over. What are you talking about? Candles. Candle wax melts. Yeah. Candle wax melts. Can you bring them over tomorrow so I can have a look at them? Yes. And okay. you'll go... And then you'll go, oh, can we re-record re re -record this section? Because they're actually amazing. <laughs> All right, I will. Because you know, everything I get is amazing. I know, because you're least loves. Right, so <laughs> third one, we're moving on to jewellery. Cult of youth. Yeah. Oh, my God. Somebody start this. So it was founded in 2011 by silversmith designer kelly seymour she started at london fashion week ended up in portobello market and now she's in urban outfitters so it's a uh -huh. really small company that's gone up and then oh, she nice. had the birth of her son guess what her son's called um angel elvis how oh. cool is that so Why did you call your son, son Elvis? Huh? You should have called Eddie Elvis. Yeah. Well, he's called Eddie Angel, isn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah I forgot that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the birth of her son made this signature um, necklace called Mama. So it's single letters saying Mama. Now, it's not just like a normal Mama one. You've got a skull on each side. You know oh, how nice. we like our skulls. Yeah. So we're a mama and we're cool and we've got skulls. It, and that comes in at £95. There's another necklace she makes with lightning bolt with your initials on. Now, I haven't oh, nice. seen that. I've seen loads of lightning bolts, but no initials on it as well. That's £85. But the, the grand finale is they do the best lockets. I love lockets. They do the cutest lockets. And guess what they say on it? You know, you right. have them engraved and they're always something naff. It says, I fucking love you. Oh, I love it. that. There's it another been made for you. Yeah. There's another locket called Darling. And there's another locket called You're the Real Shit. 
<laughs> I just love it. Oh, I like, love that. I'm going to get that for the girls. Heart shape. You can get a oval one. You can get oh, square sorry, just one. One second. I can see Teddy in the background. Can you cut that? Yeah. Go on, darling. Carry on. You can get oval ones, heart-shaped ones, square ones, and you can get them in gold, silver, and they come with the chain. Um, she does earrings from twenty-five pound, rings from sixteen, what and chains. Cult of youth. Oh, I'm I'm looking her straight up after super, this. Super, super. Cult of youth. That's brilliant. Cult of youth. So Kelly. You're pretty awesome with your lockets because I've never seen a locket yeah, with they're a always quote. A bit pants, a bit they're naff, always they? a bit naff or love or whatever. But there's darling, you're the real shit. And I fucking love you on the locket. How brilliant is that? <laughs> Definitely going to get one of those. So, yeah, they're my Lisa loves. And that's it. Bargains. Lisa loves. Lisa loves. It's all a bit carnage this week. It's all a no, bit that was all brilliant. over the place. It was place. very, very difficult. Mark's now flashing up. That was incredibly difficult, but we did it. Mostly difficult because I wasn't recording it the first bloody time. You wasn't recording. Mark's getting his bum out. Yeah. And it's a bloody miracle we pulled that off. We're lucky and we haven't missed one yet, have we, since we started? Nope. So I'm quite We impressed. haven't missed one Sunday show, we haven't missed one, and with all the drama, we're still pulling it off. He's still yeah. here, irritating me. Come and say hello. He obviously wants to put his so face So irritating. Oh. So irritating. I heard You're you. so irritating today. You've distracted us so much. I can't wait. wait to see you in the garden. See you tomorrow. tomorrow. So pudding. Pudding, oh my God, guys, right? These are definitely the best brownies we've ever had. Now, one thing I would say, because this is, this is a recipe that I got online. I would actually say I reduced the sugar by 50 grams and we ate them and we loved them, but I would even reduce the sugar by another 50 grams. You know Maybe the one... 150 grams of sugar. And you know that they've all gone. Uh, so you, you might have seen them on my yeah. Instagram, gorgeous. You know the ones that you thought my mum had taken? You had them! Mark! How many did you eat? Oh, I don't know. Oh, Mark. I don't know. It's, it's dangerous, babe. It's dangerous. What do you mean cream eggs in them? <sighs> and cream eggs on the top. There isn't one bloody left. Well, there was. There was God, one. they were good. <laughs> And doing gardening stuff and you've immediately started. No, because this is the boring bit. Just, babe, nothing with a Cadbury's egg is boring. Oh, this smells so good. Well, I'm going to be making the brownies a bit later, Easter brownies. But um, first of all, I've got to freeze the little mini cream eggs because I'm going to actually oh, poke them. them into the brownies. So I don't want them to melt like instantly. So if they're a bit frozen. So hang on, Actually, have we started the munch one? You've gone straight in a very unceremonious Well, yeah, because session. I was just prepping to do the recipe and you've started. This is the prep. So I have unwrapped two bags of cream mini eggs and I'm about to put them in the freezer. Oh, like you do with the after eggs? Yeah. Oh my God, look. Oh, let's have a look. There's something lovely about that. Oh my God. Oh, smell. I love cream eggs so much. I probably won't have time for them to get as frozen as I'd like them. Why? Because we want to get this shot today. Oh look, there's after eights. Yeah, and you mumbled them, frozen after eights. Mark! Yeah? I hope my eggs are frozen in the freezer. That sounds like weird. How long do you think it would take for a cream egg to freeze in a freezer? Guests, what would you say? Half an hour. Do you think it'd be half an hour? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. I don't. I think a couple of hours. But we'll see. So this is fabulously chocolatey, this chocolate brownie, but it's a special one for Easter. Um, I actually saw the idea for this on Pinterest, I think. So it's not my recipe, um, but I thought it looked pretty cool. So let's have a go at it. So 200 grams of dark chocolate. And she really made a point of saying, please, please don't use milk chocolate. 
because of course we're going to put a lot of sugar in and once you've got sugar in and you've got you know you've got dark chocolate you won't get that bitterness that you get with dark chocolate but what you'll get is a really chocolatey flavor i think dark it. chocolate was created because there's by no really cocoa in people. it this is 80 percent so cocoa solids so in it goes oh don't you love that sound i do okay with 200 grams of unsalted butter. When you make cakes yourself, you get to see actually what the hell goes oh into God. them. Oh my God. Yeah, that's average. That's enormous. A Victoria sandwich will have more than that. But of course, when you have one portion, you're not eating all of that. No, no, you're not. But you might, because I might go upstairs, go <laughs> to the loo, come back down and the brands have been finished. That's true three eggs into my stand mix, my standy mixer. Oh! oh. Showing off. There you board. go. Yes. She put 250 grams of sugar. I'm just going to put 200. Especially as we're putting little cream eggs in. So, so come over here, because we're going to put it on our mixer stand. Oh, my whisk isn't there. So, if you cook a lot, it's really nice to get one of these. You can usually get one on eBay. Oh, I've dripped all the egg down. So you can usually get one on eBay that somebody's fed up of. So, and the thing is, because when you're doing what I'm going to do now, which is whisk these, we want these eggs to double in volume. We did it last week, I think, with something, yeah. but it was just egg yolks. She uses the whole yolk, the whole egg plus the sugar so we want it to double up in volume and go nice and pale so having a stand mixer is so nice because you can just leave it so we're waiting for it to be pale and double in size i've got high hopes for these brownies because we're taking a bit more care usually a brownie mix you kind of chuck everything in but I'm going to see what a difference this makes by doing this. Because I've never tried this recipe. I was going to say, you seem like you're taking this cooking segment seriously for a second. Double in volume. And don't worry if you've just got a hand electric mixer. It cools down quicker. Oh, this is a nice angle to be over here. Come over here sometimes. Oh, you invite me over. On this side of the bar, baby. Oh. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Hey. Oh. I think one week you should do a pudding for the No Name Sunday show. I'll have to film you on the on the phone though. I won't go to use that camera. Oh, oh, listen to the sound of that. That sounds totally different now. It's whisked. Sounds like my stomach. So we've got lots of lovely air in there. So what we want to do is make sure that we keep that air. So I'm going to add my chocolate. Wow, look at that. Ooh, there it goes. There it goes. Nobody knows. Now she warns that it does take quite a while to stir it in but she said take your time take your time because you don't want to knock out all that glorious air now she puts after this a hundred grams of flour and um, 50 grams of cocoa but i'm not going to i'm just going to use 150 grams of flour <laughs> Oh, I love it. I almost want it swirly like that. What do you think? Yeah. Do we need it completely rubbed in? Or kind of? Okay, she says to totally mix the chocolate in before you add the flour. But I'm not going to be wait because if I've then got to stir it as much with the flour, then we've got a lot of stirring out there. I really want to see if this is a... Just, I just, yeah. 
Well, well it's just weird because with a brownie, usually, yeah, it's sticky and dense, isn't it? <laughs> you look like you've got a nosebleed. Do I? I've got chocolate on me. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm wondering why we need to put all this air in, but I was just intrigued. She seemed to know what she was talking about. Oh, look at the smell of it, guys. I cannot tell you how gorgeous it smells. So, 100 grams, chunks, of white chocolate. You could also, oh, that's milk chocolate. Milk chocolate. That's weird, you would think that would be the packet for the white chocolate, Wouldn't and that'd be just? the chocolate for the milk. And 100 grams of white. You know what? Actually, it would have been a good idea to put these in the freezer as well. Yeah. Because then you that. would have got more of the chunks. But it doesn't cook for that long. Oh Only cooks for 25 minutes. How are we going to... What's going to happen to these when they're made? Um, I have to donate them to someone. I have to take them oh into work. You God. can't have them, darling. <laughs> okay, wait there. I'm just going to get my frozen eggs. where they go so that each square gets an egg. Oh my God, shall I lay them down? No, you're doing this one. No, I think they should go like this because I don't know if I've got enough mix to top them. I don't want one, it's weird, isn't it? Oh, I seem too chocolatey to me. Oh. <laughs> After all that, a bit chocolatey for me. Okay, so that's going to go in for 25 minutes. So with a brownie, you always see when you look around and brownie um, recipes, people complaining and saying, my brownie was raw in the middle, my brownie... Your brownie can be as raw as you like. Right. It's not going to kill you. Jeez. Right, no, just to say, because you know when you think of a chocolate fondant when it all runs out, oh, your brownie can be as soft as that. Yeah. But if you like it just a bit gooey, but you don't want it like runny, I don't really like a runny brownie, put your skewer in, and you know usually when we're baking we say pull it out and if it's totally clean then it's ready. Well, what you want with a brownie is that you pull it out and it's a little bit sticky. You don't want to pull it out and it's just pure cake mix. So we'll have a look at 25 minutes and see what we think. Pardon? I don't even like you. Why don't you like me? I don't like my brownies. I love your eggs. Oh, the whole house smells of chocolate. Whoa, look at that. Perfect. See, look, a little bit of cake mixture, which means it'll be nice and soft inside, but not too runny. There we go. Just leave it to cool. So nice. So I've got some nice little bits of decorations. Oh. That'd be too big to put in the middle. Mm -hmm. Might be. Okay, so I'm just gonna put half white chocolate there. I'm gonna add. Oh god, that was probably right way there. too much. But you don't know because they're all so different. I put the chocolate back into the microwave and look how it's gone. So now I don't have enough chocolate to do white and yellow. 
so we'll just have to drizzle in a very small way okay <laughs> it's seized oh it's not good it's seized but that's what she said to do right that didn't work and now we've got a lot of seized white chocolate so what i'm going to do is cut this into three It's like a great, um, brown, uh, what are they called? Brownie. Yeah, it's what look with the perfect, yeah, perfect crunch. crunch top. Oh, it's gooey inside. Jesus Christ, this is my oh nemesis. God. This is. We thought again. Or, or we could put little chicks in the middle like this. What do we think will be cuter? I quite like the bunny. What do you reckon? Bunny. Oh my God, I'm sorry. That's a perfect brownie. Look at the crunch on the top. Wow, is there a bit of, can you see yeah. a bit of egg there? Should we put him in afterwards? He's a bit annoying, Mr. Bunny. stuff just was good for you. Oh, what, why isn't such stuff good for you? Mm, look. I think it's why we're ultimately drawn to the vices. We just drawn to everything that's bad for us. That's good. Okay, then. So it wants to beat him. Mm. Then, so okay. now, for the gram, you don't have to do this bit. I think an oozing half cream egg on each one would be too naughty for words. Is that just heaven in itself? Just me cutting like open? Goals, as they say. <laughs> goals. <laughs> what, do we ever know what that means, but it's goals. I wonder if we could put a little bit more of this in the middle. No. Okay, right. They're so like eggs. Oh, look at them dripping. Should I get a little spoon and make them drip a bit? No, more? no, no. You don't. Yes! Have, no, you don't have to do that. It's happening. It's happening. Just it's put them happening. on. It's <laughs> happening. You don't need to help it along. That's extra. Goals That's the gram. and extra. No, goals and extra. You. Oh, he's a bit extra. What, what do you think about this in the middle? Oh, you don't like it. it. Looks like a flying UFO. Shall I put it more here? No, he's not part of it. He oh, looks bloody stupid. Hell. Oh, Christ. He looks like a moron. That's the one from the middle. It's a bit breaky, but it's so delicious. That's like the best one out of all. So you don't want this in the no, middle? He looks awful. He looks like a UFO. You're being annoying. I'm trying to do a nice Easter scene like a proper, proper vlogger. lawnmower all day, the streamer and the effing chainsaw. Three little chicks went swimming one day over the hill and far away. Mummy duck said quack 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 Shit. and only four little chicks came back. Come on, it looks like they're all going I can't not have my hands in it when I'm putting them in it. Sausage rolls. Well they're not ready yet, that's just a warning. Oh, come on. Yeah, they're great. Okay. Just because you're hungry, just because you're desperate to eat a bloody brownie, we've all got to suffer. Yeah. Oh, look, there he is, popping up again. That one, look, that's really dribbling. That's really know, nice that's there. I know, that's really good. Oh, now he likes the dribbling. Two minutes ago, you didn't have time to wait for the dribbling. Okay, it's enough of the rabbit. It looks very, very Eastery. Oh, come on. Fucking gorgeous. Where do we go to now? 
Mr. Waller. Do I look quite YouTube-y? You look incredibly YouTube-y. Do I look grammy? Yeah. I'm from the gram. I'm an influencer. You're a what? Influencer. <laughs> I'm influencing you to have really, really bad few cakes. Few cakes? I'm a bad influencer. You're I'm a influencing bad, influence. bad things. Tell us where we're going. The book. Mark, I'm sorry, but they're just the best goddamn brownies you've ever had. Desperation by Megan Nolan. They say never to judge a book by its cover, but that's, I don't know why, there's something very compelling about that cover. So, Acts of Desperation, this is Megan Nolan's first novel, uh, and some of the press I've sort of read around it is suggesting, wow, this is another brilliant Irish writer, she's Irish. What is it about you Irish? You have the gift of the Blarney, isn't it? It's the gift of the, of the written word, a beautifully sort of poetic and, um, emotionally sort of, I don't know, it's sort of archaic and instinctive use of language. It's just beautiful. Um, anyway, so as you can probably guess, this, I think this is a beautifully written book. It's told in the first person. We never actually get to know the character's name. We just know that she is a young woman set around 2014. And in terms of time jumps, um, it's told from the point of view of the now, if you like, of her being in a relationship or in a sort of very fractured and very fraught and very tricky relationship but it's sort of it rather than flashing back it then flashes forward to 2019 so you have these moments where you flash forward to 2019 where she's in Athens uh, essentially sort of sat on her own sort of reflecting on things or reflecting on what's going on in 2014 in the book from this sort of vantage point of a moment in the future very short chapters so I mean these kind of weird details very short chapters which uh, in a weird way makes it very easy to read in, in, in many respects it's very digestible you, you, you know you can find many moments to sort of grab two or three chapters whilst you're sort of going about your life but it's a really compelling raw emotional portrait if you like of or, or an intriguing portrait about what women or, or certainly this young woman and I therefore think probably a lot of women are willing to tolerate in their relationships with men or sexual relationships with men um, it's about the extent to which if you like in any relationship sacrifices are made but this is very much about the the sacrifices that this woman makes and it's an incredibly if you like, intelligent, smart, wise, hurt, pained, damaged, but wise portrait of what those nuanced sacrifices are that women make in their sexual relationships with men and their emotional relationships with men. Um, this was quite a difficult book to read as a father to, uh, you know, for young women. It was not just in terms of knowing what they're going to go through or what they have gone through or what they will go through in their relationships with men but it was also a very difficult read for me to read as a man having been a young man going through i would say even though i had a sort of very feminist upbringing going through an era of masculinity if you like where male privilege just hasn't been understood um, and I, I keep keep in this sort of almost resurgent Me Too scenario that we're in at the moment. Um, I'm constantly snagging or being snagged in my own attitudes of the younger me, uh, my own expectations, my own demands, my own role in relationships that I had. And this book is interesting and clever in that it doesn't apportion blame. So. This lead character is in a relationship with a, a or get, falls into a relationship with a guy called Kiaran. Kiaran. He's not a particularly pleasant character. You you can't see particularly why she's with him. He's a bit gruff. He's a bit morose. He's very ungiving. He's very unsort of. Uh, he's, he's very ungracious. He's, he's actively rude at times. 
there's a there's a sort of he he you know he leaves he he's still got this issue with his previous girlfriend like he's still connected to her and he makes no sort of he makes no sort of uh, attempts to hide the fact that he's still sort of infatuated in a sense with his ex to the point that very early on in the book so it's not a spoiler um you know having hooked up with the woman that this book is who's telling the story he leaves her to go back to this woman uh, and we have scenes and moments where our character is kind of, you know, doing that thing of going through his emails and discovering that, you know, she's considered to be the sort of slightly larger one, the slightly less sophisticated one. Um, and this is also, so this is not only a really interesting book about relationships, it's a really interesting book about female identity, uh, a woman's attitude to her own body. Um, our, our character in this is an overt self-harmer. Um, but what's interesting about this book is that obviously she is scratching her arms, she is locking herself in her room, she is doing this damage to herself. But at the same time, that's toffee, but at the same time, it, it's clever in that you are you easily draw analogies between acute self-harm in the form of cutting yourself, but also the kind of self-harm that a lot of people, and I think especially a lot of women, engage in, in the men they choose uh, and the behaviour they're willing to tolerate or the behaviour in their male partners that they're willing to forgive or ignore or allow to carry on. Um, so it's a really interesting book. And so its title, Acts, Acts of Desperation, really pivots around this idea of what are otherwise normal acts of perhaps love or commitment or tolerance or um, sacrifice. There's a really interesting uh, passage towards the end of the book where she, and this is when she's in Athens, and this is in the sort of, you know, the flash forward moment, but now, if you like, of the book, where she's a friend of hers, Mark, unfortunately, his name's called, comes to visit her. She's she's elected to have this sort of single life. She's been sort of hurt by all her relationships. But she talks about having him, him wheedling his way into having sex with her. And there's a big passage towards the end of this book about wheedling, about men wheedling, about men putting extraordinarily low level pressure on wanting something sexual from a woman. And I think that will make uneasy reading for many men, many women. And I think this is one of those books that men absolutely should read. So if you know of men who, you know, aren't closed off to the idea that, you know, emotions and things like that and, 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 and uh, the way in which relationships work is a bit more complicated than just man, woman, get them to read this book. Because this, is, this, this was like opening a book into the darker recesses or opening a, a door into the darker recesses of every woman I, I've known's love experience, if you like. Um, and this later time in Athens, which we keep cross-cutting to, where she sort of sat on the front. I mean, I mean, at one point towards the end of the novel, I was thinking, oh, this is almost like a sort of modern day reworking of Shirley Valentine. You know, we haven't got a, it's not a middle-aged, uh, menopausal, uh, 50, 60 something woman deciding to turn her back on love. This is a woman who has sort of, at quite a young age, because it's only five years later than all the relationship nightmare that's going on in this book. It's only five years later that, that it's set in Athens, but she feels sufficiently older than younger people. People. But she's decided to move herself away from things. She's decided to move herself away from human relationships. She's decided to essentially isolate. And you could ask, you could argue that's a good thing, that's a bad thing. Is it an act of desperation? Is her, is her one last act of desperation sort of a move to artificial isolation on a Greek island? It feels very nice when she's there. Um, its thoughts on love are sort of heartbreakingly accurate and poignant. Um, for example, I mean, she, at one point she rehooks up with, because uh, what happens is her relationship with Kiaran starts to degenerate. He gives her very little. She's willing to take more and more. She's hurting herself. She sort of is compromising herself. She cooks for him. She looks after him. She she does everything. She treats him like a lord, and then she loses her own self respect. It's that, it's that weird thing, isn't it? Again, like self harming or addiction, where your behaviour, you do it because she thinks she can make him love her more. But in doing it, she's kind of eroding her own self love, and so her own self esteem becomes less and less and less. But and, and so as the book sort of moves towards the end, it has a real sort of energy to it, where her she sort of kind of goes in inverted commas off the rails and starts to have a lot of other sexual encounters there's some very explicit material in this I think if you're at all 
faint-hearted or easily offended you may want to avoid this i know a couple of uh, you subs went to read it and at the end i was thinking oh my god this is a bit embarrassing um it is quite explicit but i think all the better for that because it's it's fundamentally honest it's fundamentally raw it's very real it's discomforting in a good way but for example she meets a, 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 a her first love and and that first love uh, that she rehooks up with is so much more meaningful because they didn't have sex they didn't have love you know the best one that she the best love or or relationship that she had with the boy was the one that she hadn't slept with. All the way through it's set in Dublin which is a really wonderful pulsing background setting and, and other parts of Ireland. Um, there's a lot of talk about addiction and the way in which alcohol is used as a sort of anaesthetizing effect if you like on tolerating some of the, the self-harm that, that, that this relationship is enacting on her and I think it's really key to sort of hammer that point home you know it's the acts of acts of desperation goes back to this idea that just because you know that yes you can self-harm with with a blade with alcoholism with addiction you know with sleeping with lots and lots of people but uh, you know equally by staying in a really harmful relationship you can do the most damage to yourself it's a challenging book for a man to read I think her relationship with her father is a really emotional read for me it pulls no punches in taking you to the heart really of a conflicted woman's hunt for love, the way in which she confuses love, sex with love, how sex is such a sort of indelible part of the lovemaking process, you know, what does it mean? It looks at the way in which sex for her becomes a very physical damage, physically damaging thing, so there are scenes, again, very, very challenging scenes towards the end of this book, which I would warn you about. Uh, there was one particular line that I did write down, and I just thought this was such a wonderful sort of sum up, if you like, of the often inherent contradiction in so many things in lives in life you know that I think when one has begins to get a grip on some of the weird things that make up what it means to be a human being a lot of them essentially are contradictory um, and uh, so some quotes here this, this particular quote about having sex with this guy towards the end who was wheedling for sex I did what I had to do to stop him from wanting to have sex with me which was to have sex with him and I think in that in that 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 sentence tells so many complicated stories and histories of the male female dynamic when it pivots around sex she's an incredibly evocative emotional it was searingly painful to read and yet somehow searingly beautiful to be able to turn such pain into a story of such simple beauty almost makes sense of the pain i mean you don't want it but it almost makes sense of the pain it made me want to give uh, the writer uh, megan nolan a huge hug um but then of course as soon as i wanted to give her a hug i thought oh god she, given what she's gone through she'll think there's some ulterior motive and i think it's a really challenging book for men as well as a challenging book for women to reconsider what it is they're willing to take tolerate and accept uh, in any relationship with men. It's Easter Sunday and Teddy Talks is happening in the garden! Yay! He's not in the house, but he's in the garden. Oh my God, it feels so weird. It almost feels, I don't know. Like a renaissance. It just feels illegal. Yeah. Well, let's <laughs> see what the distance between your feet is. It might be. <laughs> it's not. We're two metres. We're five. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Oh, how are you, Ted? Lovely. I, mean, I went for a long walk for a, for, for the first time. Oh. You know, I lost a lot of gra grounds during the winter. Yeah. yeah. So I walked today and I was pleased with myself. Not too bad. Oh, good. But not very good. No. We'll take you to the park, Dad. Sorry, Dad. We yeah. have to take you to the yeah, park. Yeah. One day would be lovely. Yeah. Yeah. So, what's Teddy Talks about well, today? Uh, last time, uh, what we're going to talk, we're going to talk about the cartwheel entering the annals of the political history of the Middle East. Oh, yeah. me. I think we need a drum roll for that. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, can you put a drum roll yeah, in? Yeah, put it in now. <laughs> drum roll. Okay, we're on. <laughs> Okay, but before that, oh. you remember my talk with my uh, cousin Mario. I have another cousin in Cyprus called Suhail, and he heard the talk between me and Mario, so he rang me up. Uh, and Mario, the one that said, 
this has all been um, no, a said, test for the human race and we failed. Yeah. Yeah. So you have nothing to worry about. Yeah, we failed. We failed. Yeah. <laughs> COVID was a test. So <laughs> this, this cousin of mine who lives in Cyprus rang me up and he said, I heard your talk with Mario. Mm. He said, and uh, if you are going around the world gathering words of wisdom, I have one for you. Mm. I said, oh, yeah, what is it? He said, in the Middle East, and Cyprus as well, you know, generally speaking in the area, they say one thing, life is like a cucumber. Life is like a cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> one day it's in your hand, the next day it's up your famagusta. <laughs> See, he lives in Cyprus. So he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> and uh, Famagusta, I believe, is the capital city of Cyprus. <laughs> so anyway. let's, let's just ruminate over that. Life is a cucumber. Yeah. One minute it is in your hand, the next it is up your Famagusta. Famagusta, yeah. But you have to be living <laughs> in Cyprus to see it. <laughs> anyway, but the, uh, the, other, the other deal, uh, one day, the head of intelligence in Jordan rang me up and he said there are 10 top Syrian officers in a cave, <gasps> hiding in a cave on the Jordan Syrian border asking for asylum. I said why? What have they done? He said they tried to knock the president down, uh, Hafez al-Assad, the father of the present one. You see? <laughs> right. What but was his name? <laughs> Hafez, Hafez Lassen. And, and this is in the 60s. Yeah. These 10 officers tried to knock him down. I wish they could have done it. To yeah. that save the world a lot of trouble. God, imagine. But the they, what, they'd come to assassinate, um, what's his name? Assad's father. Yeah, yeah. Assad is in charge yeah, now. A coup d'etat. A coup d'etat. Yeah, and they, he said, they are waiting for us to give them permission to seek asylum in Jordan. He said, I've heard about the uh, cartwheel. <laughs> he said, <laughs> oh, he said, I know you've got a little hotel. Could you accommodate 10 top Syrian army officers? <laughs> I, said, I said, I said, I said, yeah, 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 we, we could try, you know, but mainly we are a pub breed. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, there'll be good customers. He said, he said, they like Iraq. So I have a lot of Arab, yeah. and because they were educated in France, they would appreciate a bit of Crovoisier. Oh. Oh. Arab like... is like, um, it's the Arabic ouzo. If you've ever been to Grecian, it's an yeah. aniseed drink that the yeah. Arabs love. And, and Crovoisier because they want, they have the French education. Oh. Right. So, Classic. So I said, okay, everything, everything is all right. He said, all right, look, look after them. He said, I think they will be arriving about two o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Two o'clock in the afternoon, or around about that time, two heavily armed military uh, vehicles arrive with machine guns up by, on, you know, and rocket, laun rocket launchers. Oh my God. The lot. <laughs> the hotel is tiny, huh? but, you know, about 50 feet, you know, the whole thing. <laughs> huh? Two great big army jeeps <laughs> with soldiers dressed up to the hilt, you know. I said, what's going on? <laughs> Where are we gonna go? Well, what's go what's gonna what's gonna happen? They said <laughs> they said they, we have ten very important people coming huh? and we've been told to guard them. Nobody comes in, nobody comes out. <laughs> And then the neighbors started surrounding the jeeps, you know, looking at the machine guns and what's going on, what's going on. And they were saying, oh, I think they're going to blow the, blow the place up. Uh. <laughs> Somebody said, uh, Nadim, the owner, is going to be shot at dawn. Uh. <laughs> what was, where was Betty? <laughs> Be Betty was, thank God, in the house. <laughs> and then suddenly a bus arrived and there were huh? 10 officers. Uh, troop out. Uh, welcome, please come in. Took them into the hotel. In the reception, I said, Who's the boss, please? Uh, who's your leader? Can I have a word with him? 
and the big officer. You know, they they didn't have any uh, stars or anything. They were dressed just in military overalls because they were busy trying to knock the old chap down. You see, <laughs> so I, I said, "Who? You are the spokesman." I said, "Just tell me, what would you like? You know, we, we are at your service." He said, "Nadim." If you get the chance to get to a shop, please buy me a pair of tweezers. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding! Yeah, no, he said, my eyebrows meet. <laughs> <laughs> and people think I'm a criminal or something. Oh. So, he's been hiding in a cave. He's got a monobrow. He's like Umar. Yeah. <laughs> Oh Maybe my next week. God, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> so these <laughs> undercover, essentially oh God, assassin so wannabes. Just when you think these stories yeah. can't get any better, they no, do. No, no. Yeah. That's the inside story. Wow. What happened inside. Ah. Oh my God. So this week we've had monobrows, armed vehicles and assassins. Yeah, there, yeah, there, there was, you know, this, I think there were about eight soldiers, uh, two military jeeps. Yeah. Guns and rocket launchers Bloody in front of a hotel, which is about, I think, by the, I think it was about 18 rooms, you know, a <laughs> tiny thing. You see, total military occupation. So. And next week I'll tell you what happened oh. inside. Oh my God, you've got to admit, that's a real duff, duff, duff. That's a duff, duff, duff. That's really episode. She's still hung up about the uh, brownies. Well, you probably had about 100,000 calories. I spread it across five days. No, you didn't, because where were they? I came down the next day, there was one left. Well, my mum did have some, and I had some last night. And I thought, because I had to sleep in Nanny Di's room last night, I found a little parcel of tin foil. And in the middle of the night, I opened it, and I felt like I'd entered Please my mother's psyche. Please don't your mum I'd... eating sugar at three o'clock in the no, morning. No, no, it wasn't. It was a cheese Massively sandwich. Massively short she had your a cheese life. sandwich in a tin foil wrap. I'm going to get my Where is she? Where is she? What, what, what is she? Mum, what are you? Anyway, episode 65, done. There you go. I hope this gets to you at some point this weekend. Happy Easter. Happy Easter.